What is going on everyone? Adam Adler here with PragmaticWays.com coming at you today with a, another video inside the Eclipse Debugging Tutorial Series. In this video, we're going to take a really good look at the three main buttons we use inside of the debugger here inside of Eclipse. And that's going to be the Step Into button, the Step Over button, and the Step Return button. Now we've touched on these three buttons before in previous videos in the series, but in this video we're going to take a, a really good look to try and understand when and why we would want to use one of these three different buttons here. So if you're new here, you haven't been following along, basically what we got going on here is just a very simple program. There's really not much to it. It's you know 20 lines or 29 lines max. We just have a basic array here, an int array. And then we send this array to this function here. All this function does is loop through the array and multiply each number in this array by the multiplier. In this case, that's going to be three. So all these numbers will be multiplied by three. Then we go into this function here and all this function does, as the name specifies, is it's going to average up and return the average of all the numbers in this array. And then all we do is we just print out the average here. So now we're going to step into the debugger. I have a breakpoint enabled on line six, and I'm going to debug this code so we can really look at these three different buttons here and try and understand when and why we want to use any given one. So I'm going to go to run and then debug and step into the debugger. So when you were on just a normal assignment here, we see that I'm not bringing this to a separate function or anything else. I'm not really calling any methods. This is just an assignment. Notice we don't even show a step return here because there's there's no step to return. I'm inside the main method right now. I'm not down deeper inside another method or anything else. I'm just at inside the main method, just a single execution line here, just a single line of code to execute. So realistically, either one of these buttons doesn't matter. I could either step over this button and it's still going to run it, or I guess I could step into it, but there, again, there's nothing to really step into. So when you're just assigning a variable to just a normal constant value or something like that, there's nothing you really need to dig into, then, then either one of these buttons doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go ahead and click step into because that's the one I tend to use more often. Now here we have the ability to either step over this function, meaning we don't care about actually debugging inside of this function here, this method, we literally want to step over it. Obviously the execution is still going to happen, we're just not going to take the time to go through it step by step by step. So that's when, that's a great use case for what the step over function would be, or step over button would be used for, and we can actually see what that looks like here. If you remember from our previous videos, if I were to uh, press the step into button, our program would immediately jump right here because this would be the next line of code that would actually need to be executed. But instead, this time, I'm going to be doing the step over button and our execution, our, our, our current uh, point of execution, would jump right down to line 8 instead. So we'll see what that looks like. And that jumped down to line 8, and I can go over here and verify that this method still did run. We just didn't actually see it. We didn't take the time to go through and step through this code individually. We stepped over this method. So if I go over on my uh, right-hand side and look at my variables window, I will see that my array did get multiplied by 3. It still went through this method. We just didn't, like I said, we stepped over it. Uh, so that's probably like the, the best case for a step over. And then now we're here. Again, we're assigning a variable, but we're assigning a variable to an actual method here. So in this case, we will want to actually have the option of either step into or step over, and this will make a difference because before when we were assigning this variable here, we were assigning it to a constant value, so either step over or step into was really gonna do the same thing. This time though, if we press step over on this, we're not gonna be able to go into this function here. So in this case, we're actually going to want to press the step into if you actually want to go inside this function. And in this case, I, I do want to go inside this function here, this method here. So I'm going to press step into, and that will immediately jump us down to line 19 instead. And now we can see a little arrow here. We are at line 19. And I can go through and everything else. And I can step into this. I can step into this. Ideally, what I think should happen 
uh, for a for loop, if at any given point I wanted to just step over this for loop and I want to immediately jump down to line 25, I actually can't use this step over feature for that. This really is only for like methods or other things like that. I cannot press the step over to just skip this for loop, but I will show you a neat trick in the next video on how to do that. But now what I want to do is show you this uh, step return button. And we've seen this in the previous video before when we stepped into like an external class of like the Java JDK or something and we didn't really want to be inside of there. We used, though the first time we just used the step return button, but let's say you're really deep inside of there and, and you didn't want to be inside there in the first place. Remember from the pre previous video, we showed how to set up uh, step filters to actually not even go inside there in the first place. But either way, we can also use this step return button to get out of a function that we are interested in. Like currently right now, we are inside the get average method. And let's say I'm done debugging, I found out where my bug was and I want to continue on after this method here. Well, I can just immediately click the step return button and it's going to pop me right back to where this line was called from, which was right here on line 8. So it's going to stop the execution here on line 21 where I'm currently at and bump me right back up to line 8 so it can perform the actual assignment. So we can see right now we don't actually have a value for the average because we're out of scope. We're down here inside this method. And I'm going to press the step return button now. And it's going to pop me back over here. And now I will step into this or step over it. Again, it doesn't really matter. But now what this is saying is, hey, we returned from this get average function. We have what value we are going to return from, which we can see over here in the right hand side. The get average returned the value 9. So now I can step into that and that's going to perform the actual assignment. And now we can see this average variable does equal nine. Okay. So that's all I'm going to show for this video. Just to recap, we have the three main buttons here, step into, step over, and step return. Most of the time I'm using step into when I actually want to go line by line by line and step into everything that I'm interested in, every method, every assignment, everything else. Step over is going to be for literally stepping over different methods when you don't care about seeing the actual inner workings of a certain method. You can step over and just sort of skip it. And then step return could be when you are inside of a method and you're no longer interested in stepping in, uh, stepping through that method and you want to return back to the point of execution of who called that method. So that's when the step return method or step return button would be used for. So in the next video, we're going to learn how to sort of step over a for loop or jump to a different point of code within the debugger without necessarily using the step over, step into, or step return buttons. So thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you can be notified when we come up with new content. And head over to my blog at www.pragmaticways.com. A link to that will be in the description below. And until next time, everyone, happy coding.